Just yesterday, devastating news broke from South Australia about a fatal shark attack on a 55-year-old local teacher who'd been out surfing with a group near Granites Beach, just south of Streaky Bay. We were at going toe surfing and going about our day to catch this new swell that arrived yesterday morning and I happened to get there just a couple of minutes after the incident. All that was there was a surfboard floating in the lineup, all the kids on the rocks and waving at me to alert me to the fact that I already knew there was something wrong well before I got there. Now as they caught waves and enjoyed their surf, the group had initially stuck together, which is of course a common practice and not to mention highly recommended one, especially among surfers as it's widely believed that there is safety in numbers and that sharks, they're much less likely to approach larger groups of people. But unfortunately, in what turned out to be a fateful decision, the 55-year-old had for some reason drifted a fair distance away from the group. Now this action is what likely attracted the attention of what witnesses say to be an approximately 4.2 meter or 14 foot long great white shark. And just moments later, eyewitness Jack Martin would report watching in horror from a nearby cliff as the shark approached the surfer, knocked him off his board, circled back and grabbed him in its massive jaws and began thrashing him around for a few seconds before finally pulling him under. In addition to Martin, there were 8 to 10 other people, all of whom were in the water, that had seen and heard the commotion, some of whom were just meters away from the victim as he was being attacked. Attacked him from the side and uh, he, he went under once and came up again and went under again and, and that was the last that, that lad saw of him as he scrambled for the rocks. So within moments of the attack, Jeff Schumacher, who was a nearby surfer, he took immediate action. He was already on his jet ski, he headed straight to the scene, hoping to assist the victim, but instead he would find himself face to face with the massive predator and would capture this now viral video, courtesy of 7 News Australia. The big fish, you bastard. I've just come back out here and I've, I've seen the shark, but there's no sign of any person. I had a, a young fella from Coffs Harbour on the back of the ski with me and our surfboards and a, a foil and, and he, he got scared immediately so I, after I've had the first little search I took him into the lagoon and dropped him off and spoke to one of the local boys and said where did you last see any commotion in the water and uh, a lad pointed exactly where it was and I went straight there as fast as I could and, and uh, turned the jet ski off. I knew the shark would come to me if I turned the ski off and just, I, it, within a minute, uh, it was a big female turned up at the side of the ski and I just circled with it for half a dozen circles, figuring that there might have been some evidence uh, of a body close to the shark and I knew that I was very close to where it happened. I just watched and watched and there was, there was nothing more and the shark left me. I had to actually get out of there because a set came through. Another jet ski rocked up, a lad from Sydney and uh, he we just kept looking for, for 10 minutes but couldn't find anything. So of course following the attack there was an immediate and coordinated response. Streaky Bay's emergency services were on high alert with police, coast guard and marine rescue units all mobilized. Sirens were blaring which not only signaled a call to action for these units but also they served as a warning of course to others in the vicinity that something major has happened. As of the most recent update, the search operation, while extensive, it's currently facing major challenges in the rescue mission, or at this point, it's widely believed as more of a recovery mission for a proper send-off or burial. So helicopters, boats, and jet skis were all mobilized. They were operated by professionals and also local volunteers. Unfortunately, this latest update says that due to unfavorable ocean conditions, it was announced in an article from ABC just hours ago that search and rescue missions have been temporarily paused. So given the known presence of sharks in these waters, there are protocols for such incidents that happen. But of course, the size of the great whites involved adds an extra layer of urgency to the operation. So local fishermen, with their knowledge of the area, they are assisting uh, search teams with their valuable insights on where they could possibly find the shark or where the shark may be found if it was sighted before based on the location of the attack. So the beach is temporarily closed and nearby beaches as well, and advisories are being issued, urging both locals and tourists to stay out of the water until it's deemed safe. So in the wake of the recent shark attack near Granites Beach, the community of South Australia is grappling with a series of serious shark attacks. But this latest incident comes on the heels of another shocking attack less than a month ago when Pamela Cook, who was 64 years old, was at Beachport on the state's southeast coast when she was also attacked by a shark, suffering lethal leg injuries. Fortunately though, she did survive. But once again, this just goes to show that these are not isolated incidents. Uh, you know, just earlier this year, the waters at Walker's Rock on the Erie Peninsula also became the scene of a tragic event when a 46-year-old surfer lost his life to a shark. A 46-year-old man had taken to the water to go surfing, but was then attacked by a shark. 
The Australian Shark Incident Database paints a concerning picture for South Australia, especially after this attack now. There have been 22 fatal shark attacks recorded, with over 50 other incidents documented that were serious. And it's no surprise, of course, because the frequency of these encounters are increasing as the number of beachgoers are increasing as well. So ultimately, these waters, which many locals and tourists, they flock to for recreation, uh, they've become increasingly perilous. So these incidents, they've not only caused grief and fear among the community, but they've also raised questions about the factors contributing to the rise in such encounters. It is a time of the year where the whales are migrating away from our coasts. Uh, fur seal pups are learning how to be by themselves and swim off, and that's a time when white sharks come in close and can be looking for those food sources. Now, if you are interested in in-depth coverage about stories like this, I'll leave some cases for you at the end screen. One of them is more informative for more recent events, and for our main episodes, we do more documentary-style coverage. So do check out both and see which flavor suits you best. But once again, these are real stories, and our deepest respects go out to all the victims of these tragedies, as well as their families and loved ones. This is Animal Al. Till next time.